In this episode of Grief in Common, we mention natural disasters, plane crashes, and we talk about death throughout. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Winston's Wishes Grief in Common podcast. Um, I'm Zoe. I've been one of the young ambassadors of Winston's Wish for eight years now. Um, And with me, I have Maisie. Maisie, who are you? Hi, I am Maisie. (laughs) Um, I have been a young ambassador for, I think, about 10 years now, so a really long time. Um, I found out about Winston's Wish through a family friend when I lost my sister in a tsunami. How did you get in touch with Winston's Wish? So I lost my dad in 2000 when I was sort of two or three um, and he died in a plane crash quite suddenly. Um, But I got in touch with Winston's Wish because actually my mum raised a load of money at my dad's funeral. Right. Wanted to start a charity and then realised all of the money would end up going into like the set up admin costs. Oh, okay. So ended up my granny, I think, so my dad's mum had said, oh, there's a charity called Winston's Wish. Mum was like, I'd much rather the money went straight into something that actually then... Yeah. Got the got got the help that they needed kind of thing. For sure. Um so found out by Winston's Wish through them and then I ended up doing a camp. Winston's Wish don't run them anymore, but um it was a two day um sort of sleepover. I did it with my brother and my mum did like an adult one separately. Um, which was really good fun and I kind of was mainly supported through that and then got back in touch nice. to ask if I could do anything else and became Young Ambassador. Oh, very cool. I had counselling with one of the counsellors, um, with Winston's Wish, who's a lovely lady called Janet. She is wonderful. And we actually found out about her through my family friend had used Winston's Wish. He used the services um, for his children and he, when we lost my sister, he said um, to my parents, like, Winston's Wish is an absolutely amazing charity. Um, You should really get involved and like, you know, bereavement support is so important for children. And that's a big thing, I guess, people don't know about um, because they end up not having the help when they're younger and then um, struggling later in life because they haven't come to terms with their grief. So as you can see, Zoe and I are very to terms with our grief. And um, because Winston's Wish really helped us when we were younger. It was just absolutely wonderful that, obviously not wonderful, but it was great that we had that connection so that we knew about Winston's Wish and I had the counselling pretty soon after the tsunami. It was quite quick. And that's why I then later in life, um, I think Winston's Wish got into touch and said would you be interested in helping and being a young ambassador and I said absolutely and I think I've been a young ambassador since I was 15 16 um so a really long time um and try and help in any which way I can and here here we are (laughs) (laughs) amazing again in, during COVID, Winston's Wish kind of like got all the young ambassadors back together um, over Zoom and yes. there was a lot more conversations yeah. and Maisie and I actually hadn't met. So we'd met like a few, of, I'd met a few of the other ambassadors. We'd just completely not crossed paths. Yeah. And then on the Zoom calls, we were just having the <laughs> We had a bit of a bromance. A, a total bromance. It was quite like, it was COVID. Everyone was miserable. It was like a really boring time. Yeah. And, and a sad time for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, and we were on the calls just like taking the piss out of each other Completely. which i think then was the foundation of our of our friendship now definitely i remember we decided to meet up for a walk yeah so cute and i think actually that was um something that we both really had in common that we had like had that support from winston's wish and yeah um were in a in a position i think one of the other podcasts talks about um humor in death yeah and how like that's very much how i deal with my grief is um making light of the situation and i think in an actual quite healthy way yes um, yeah just because i've like had the conversation the deep conversations you know it's now time where it's like it's it's rubbish that it happened of course like, you can't not, change it exactly you know? so let's kind of sort of make light of what we can so and i think we both had that attitude um which was really nice because then it's kind of like both very shocking stories yeah it's less of like a Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. And it's more of like a cool, do you want an almond croissant? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of mess. I feel like you're one of the few people I can actually not necessarily like joke about what happened with, but just feel very comfortable and not get sad. Yeah. Because some people you talk to and some people I was obviously in the tsunami with, and whenever we talk about it, it's quite serious. Yeah. Whereas when I'm with you, I feel like because we're both pretty to terms with the grief and, you know, as we were saying before, it's not something that goes away. 
Yeah. And you live with it. It becomes you. People think, oh, I've got to fight, fight this. It's like, no, you just have to learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think we both have achieved. Obviously, Winston's Wish helped a lot with that. And I think, yeah, you're one of the few people that I can actually kind of joke around with. Oh, and we can stop. laugh and we can be sad. Yeah. But happy. We have a good time. We have a great time. I mean, you know, happy Christmas, by the way. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, we talked about the fact that we've both lost our mum. Yes, of course. And um, how does that affect your experience? What is your experience of Christmas? I mean, mine's a little bit unique because I lost my sister on Boxing Day. So I think the first few years were just a struggle, obviously, because not only is... Christmas can be like, you know, a tough time for some people because it really brings to the front of people's minds that they're missing that person mm -hmm. and they can't share this day with some people and everyone wants to be happy and everyone's meant to be happy and sometimes it's hard to be happy and you feel like, why can't I be happy like everyone else? Mm -hmm. And then it makes things worse. And it's fine to be sad. Like, as we've said, we're pretty to terms with the grief, but I still have days when I'm really like on the floor, like in a puddle not not good and you have to just go with it like that is what you need clearly in that time and for us not only was it a day where we had to be happy because it was christmas but it was also day the following day which was the anniversary of my sister's death so we were in the 2004 boxing day tsunami and we were in it with quite a lot of other people it was a big group of us that were away and when we returned i was quite young so i don't remember how quickly we implemented this but we now and still to this day share christmas with one of the other families who were there in the tsunami with us so every single christmas since then we didn't do it before but i think we were all just like oh god this is a bit depressing mm -hmm. um let's all be together because that's what we needed in that time it's almost about being with people where it like goes without saying yeah of course and also it's you know you don't want to have to talk about these things but you, but you also want to people to, to understand yeah. yeah and with that family we you know they understand obviously they were there yeah um and we since then have also become incredibly incredibly close because we weren't as close before we we're all just like good friends mm -hmm. whereas now we are like family. My dad is so close, there's like four boys. My dad is so close with them, especially particularly to one of them because they went through that experience together. And we're all just, you know, we really support each other. And yeah, it's, it's you know, it's the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. yeah. And then Boxing Day obviously is the anniversary. And that family, um, obviously the whole group, we lost quite a few people. So everyone is gonna be sad. Mm -hmm. So I think we originally just wanted to be on our own that day and just to be sad and mm -hmm. be depressed and wallow. And then my, I went to school with a girl. Um, we met in year four, so we must have been about nine. And her mum became friends with my mum and we became all good friends. And then she was like, guys, we, we're shaking you out of this depressing wallowing that you are doing on Boxing Day. You don't need to do that. So from then on, I don't remember how many years we do Boxing Day with absolutely everyone around us who wants to be there. And also the family that we do Christmas comes as well. We're all just together, which for us, I think is just, it's really good because it, as I said, it helps distract. Mm -hmm. and, and to be with the people you love who understand is exactly what you need in that and situation. I think you yeah. You all know what's going on. Um, it almost goes without saying, but it's acknowledged like, internally yeah by you all being together absolutely really absolutely yeah. what about you what do you what your christmas what do we do yeah. um so we have always gone on that we're quite christmasy people mm -hmm. and i appreciate mm -hmm. that's not everyone's not mind. everyone i mean um, i am and we'll too. come on to that we'll, we'll come oh, on to oh, that God, because go. there are times where you do need a break from christmas yes. and like it can be yeah. quite overwhelming but um on the whole we're quite christmasy people and my mum has always taken the view of the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that because I feel like where you lose a family member, I don't know if this is the same for you or if this is the same for everyone who's lost people, but um, I find that I 
bring in people that aren't family a as though they were family. Yes. So like one of like um, my brother's best mates or like a family friend or, you know, we also knew a family who lost um, their dad very young as well. Like they became family to us. Yeah. And I think at Christmas, mom's really good at being like, okay, you know, random person who doesn't have any Christmas plans, like absolutely you must come and like share it with us. Mm -hmm. However, we do have some rules. To with that. Um, one of which is you absolutely must bring a Christmas decoration for the tree. I love that. I think my brother's best friend one time bought like a, he found like my mum um, used to ride a motorbike. So it was like a dinosaur on a motorbike that he oh, made into portal. a decoration. So he was really pleased with that. So he was like, that's going to go on the tree. I love that. Um, but also we make sure that we've got like everyone that we love. Maybe, you know, we can talk about it. We drink wine yeah. as well now that we're of wine drinking oh, age. Perfect. We're also very lucky that my mum's um, husband now used to fly with my dad. So oh, really? he's really good at being like, oh, your dad would have done that or whatever. So that's really nice. That's, so he's kind, kind of, of there. About, exactly. He's, he's present there, but and he's... not necessarily like needed to talk about not all like time. yeah it's not doing it for the sake of doing it it's 100%. doing it because it comes naturally it's been a long time as yeah. well since we lost our dad it's been about like you know 20 something years mm -hmm. um but i think as you say like it's amazing how someone used the analogy the other day of like um being caught with a mosquito in the shower it's like you least expect it right but it's <laughs> so irritating and horrible <laughs> when it happens and i think that's exactly how i would describe my grief now is like most of the time i'm the sort of person everyone's like you're so like open you know, yeah, I just chat to anyone. I'm like, I am, yes. And then there'll be a random time graduation where I'd be like, God, yeah. I wish that. I wish he was there. here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I often think about my sister and that, like, would I be an aunt? That kind yeah. of thing. Like, because she was a bit older and I'm like, probably would have had kids. I wonder how things would have been different. But then also, you have to look at it in a way as. I probably wouldn't be, we probably wouldn't be as close with the family we are close with now. We yeah. probably wouldn't be friends with these kind of people. Our lives would have been a lot different. So we always have to be like, well, every cloud yeah exactly and i'm with you and in that bringing everyone in yeah. and i find you when you've lost someone you really appreciate every Value single person those people, 100%. and you're like i love you and I, you, you never like hold back I from so agree. telling people you love them yeah i think because we have experienced close death close to us we can see how quickly and unexpectedly it can happen. Yeah. You never know what's around the corner and you 100%. just love life as it comes. We always like, and I've really installed this in my housemates as well. Mm -hmm. Like if someone gives you a nice bottle of wine or champagne or Prosecco or whatever it is. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> like my mom will we'll go home and it'll be like, just like a, um, just any old weekend, maybe you're going down for a roast or whatever. Um, and mum would tell her, she'd be like, right, let's open some fist because why not? Because we're all together. Like, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating that we're all here. Yes, and we're I all together. And I really appreciate that attitude that, that my mum has passed on to me and that I have passed on to my housemates. Yeah. Like, I'm like, what exactly are you waiting? Lots of people are like, I'm going to wait for like a, a 50th or 21st or whatever it is. I'm like, what are you waiting for? The champagne would go flat you just, by then. You just don't know. You don't know. <laughs> and I think that absolutely is probably one of the best and worst things that it teaches you is just like life is short definitely all of, definitely you know, all that cliche we are thinking of doing a <laughs> i just really wanted to be on desert island desk oh really so i thought christmas edition yeah. <laughs> well i've chosen three songs so you can have a think about your three songs okay, now if you so haven't already mm -hmm. Maybe a quick reason why, and like just list your favourite Christmas songs. Because also Christmas songs, I don't know. I worked in a shop when I was eighteen, and it had like the same like oh god ten Christmas songs just and just round like, and round oh, and round. Horrendous. So there are some I just like absolutely avoid. Can't to. Yeah, yeah. But my three would probably be. I think my first one. Have you had Eight Days of Christmas by Destiny's Child? Who doesn't love Beyonce? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought we don't Christmas songs. Everyone's like being like, no, Eight Days of Christmas, Destiny's Child, just because it's so like non-Christmassy and conventional it's and I just... It's not a Christmas song! No, it is! is it? Eight Days of Christmas! Literally in the top Oh, it doesn't count. Okay. But my other favourite ones are, um, are like, more like carols. Okay! Um, because oh. I find, you know, oh, everyone school. loves Ma Michael Bublé and I'm probably sorry you're going to say one of those. I love Michael Bublé, but I'm like, I've listened to his album 5,000 times. There's nothing like a Christmas carol where like everyone's singing it. I just... Oh, oh are you going to sing for us? No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. No, no, so you just feel them, good. No, 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 I'm, I'll explain. Oh. One of them is... Um, <laughs> Everyone, my husband was like, got so depressing. Silent Night, I just think I love it's such Silent a like, Night. moment of like collection, all the Christmas madness. I love, Silent Night. I love it. I think it's really sweet. Oh, I yeah, love that you've gone night. so modern to so old. Like, 
Get a girl who can do both. <laughs> anyway, and then the other one is um, my last one is you know the song um, Holly and the Ivy. Oh really? Yeah. My well, sister was called Holly. Yeah. For, <laughs> uh, for it's context. It's and Holly and the Ivy when they were that one. I but at school different. we used to do it as like a a canon. A canon. Exactly. So Ivy, it goes Ivy, more like Ivy. Holly and the Ivy when they are both full grown. And then it goes the rising of the sun. Everyone does like I love a this. canon of like the rise, the rise, the rise. That's just so. <laughs> when you have like twelve groups of people so random at school, that was just such a fun time growing up, like oh. doing that carol. So you set the bar high here. I'm not gonna lie. Like you gave a lot of context for trying to find the choices. Thank you. So now I'm ready to hear your ones, which are no doubt probably the saddest Christmas. Oh, I can't <laughs> swear at you. Oh, happy holidays. Okay. Um, <laughs> Terrible. Uh, the snow must go on. <laughs> slay, queen, slay. I'm just going to go for it. So, Band Aid, do they know it's Christmas? Yeah. You're such a woman of the people. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> because mm -hmm. I just, like, I. it sounds really cringe but i love it when they all come together yeah like i love that they do a new one i think it's every 10 20 years i don't know i don't know because i think they i think it's every 10 years um but obviously the original was absolutely amazing and i love every christmas to like go back i do i will confess i skip past the depressing bit Yes. Because of, I don't know if anyone has seen the vi music videos. I'm sure we have. But the They're recent really one sad. has really sad stuff at the beginning. And it just makes me really sad. It's so privileged for me to just ignore the, the, the death. But, you know, I've been through my fair share. Yeah. As we know Not now. It's um, Literally. And I just love that. And then they did the recent one with, like, Ed Sheeran and One Direction. And... You are such an emotional person. Honestly, it seems like it's so like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and then One D. One D. <laughs> And then I love it when they bring back like the old people who did yeah. the original one and it's just like oh I love that. So number two. Yeah. Fairy Tale of New York, the Pogues. I just so many people's favourites. So depressing. It's I'm so like, oh. good. I love it Everyone because then it's like a little bit depressing, a little bit moody, and then it's like da 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 Yeah, because that's so upbeat. God, I feel so much better now. The final one is pretty upbeat. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you can't remember the name. <laughs> How embarrassing. Mer wait. Merry oh. Christmas, everybody, Slade. Yeah. Why is that your favourite? Oh, it's just, like, I hear it and I'm like, oh. Christmas. Yeah. I mean, terrible justification. You're just like... I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Yeah. Destiny's Child. Yeah, well, who doesn't love to hear Beyonce? Christmas. Yeah, this is this is the topic. What so have you this is normally Christmas. done? Like to celebrate traditions. Or, yeah, traditions. Traditions to, to commemorate. My mum every year, this is really cute, she gets me a Christmas decoration to open up on Christmas to hang on the tree. And then she also gets my sister one still every year. And she has the same little box and she pops it in, she puts it on the tree. Then on Christmas day, I open up mine. Then I also open up Holly's and hang hers on the tree as well. That's so so sweet. we have pairs and pairs of the same Christmas decorations that are very unique. I thought you were going for like a, sorry, <laughs> like a, very, a literal pair. Apple to we were pear. tons of Christmas pairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I've ruined a nice moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, stop it. And then um, we also have Christmas decorations from when she was younger. Mm -hmm. um, so like baby's first Christmas and stuff. So we have that, which is really sweet. When we put up the tree, it's like she's there. Like yeah, she's in our really minds. Nice. We look at the decorations and it's like, oh, like that's so lovely. We do a similar <laughs> thing. Um, what do you with do? the tree situation, so as I said, you have to anyone who's there on Christmas Day brings a yeah. decoration, mm -hmm. which is really nice because like I've got like I pull them out and I'm like this is grandma's. Oh, this yeah, is, like, you know, memories. The people it brings here, back the memories. Yeah, exactly. But are no longer with us. Um, so we do a lot of like commemorative, just for everyone we've lost, like mm -hmm. Christmas tree decorating from yeah. like all the various years. As I mentioned, we drink wine. Oh, yeah, didn't you say you drink your dad's favourite wine? Yes, I remember we do that. that. That's so lovely. And we also, um, when I was younger especially, um, I think I've told you about this, at school one year I was told that I couldn't make a Father's Day card. That still horrifies me every it's time you tell me. I was like, who were those teachers? I don't know. Anyway, but so when every year we used to make Christmas cards mm -hmm. and like we could take them to a grave, the grove was also really close to where we used to live in Essex, which was near a church where we'd go to like carol singing, where I'd get to sing. You and those night. carols. 
Holly on the Ollie thing. Like be able to kind of celebrate with the Christmas carols, but also like go and see go and see my dad's grave. That's nice. But I posted on my Instagram story, and I know that Winston's Wish did too, about like what other people do. Mm -hmm. Some really nice ones. Yeah. Some really Please nice ones. Share. Came up. I just remembered as well. Um, every year we get a wreath made for our door, and my mum always gets a wreath for my sister's grave. That's really so, nice. So yeah, we always do that as well. Someone it's actually really also thing. mentioned that, like bringing a wreath to their grave, which yeah. is really lovely, and like having a toast. We always see that. And a lot of people just like just a little nod to. The person not to them yeah so it's like it doesn't have to be about them the whole day but it's also like we've we've acknowledged you're not here and we miss you exactly yeah which is really nice that is lovely so another one of my friends wrote in and said that she um lost someone who was quite young when they died mm -hmm. um so they like sparklers on christmas day which oh, i think really love i love fireworks and i love so sparklers nice. so that's a really nice one someone else mentioned as well um which is a really lovely one of like their sibling died um close to Christmas, so like sort of November, December time, mm -hmm. and they put the tree up on his birthday, oh, which that's I think is really lovely, like that's a really, really nice, nice time to celebrate and also just acknowledge. Yeah, definitely. Um, lots of lighting candles. Bit off topic for Christmas, but mm -hmm. if we ever are abroad or we go into a church or if we ever go into any church, we always light a candle for yeah. my sister. Religious or not, is a really nice thing to definitely. do. Definitely, like, and like we don't go to calm. church a lot, mm -hmm. but if we ever go in any church, um, I always I like to too. light a candle. It's just nice. Yeah, it's my nice. dad, my grandparents, just a few. Always, few of always. The key we always, um, we actually light them for. In the tsunami, we lost another one who's very close to us. Mm -hmm. It's my mum's friend, my my friend's mum, and um, we always light a candle for her as well. Yeah, yeah. really nice. Yeah, I think it's so important. Yeah. Christmas films. Oh, Christmas. We're, again, films. we're going to have a bit of a segue because we love talking about Christmas Eve. Of course, it's got to be, got to be light, it's so, joyful, and merry. We have picked our best and worst ones, and why? Just in case you need some any recommendations mm. for for the uh, holiday season. Mine's going to be so controversial. Yours are, yours are. Time I mean, it's not going to be controversial one. of Destiny's Child, so I'm safe. True, true. So I have uh, two favourite Christmas films because mm. I don't have a worst oh, one. Do you? Yeah. Right. You have a worse one. No, I don't have a worse one because I actually would happily sit through any of them. Okay. My favourite ones. Well, there's a new one, relatively new, 2019. That is um, new. Yeah. Called Noel. Right. N O E L L E. Just and it's Anna spell, Kendrick. Just spelling yeah, because obviously Noel's N O L E. N O E L E L. E L. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Noel is my favourite Christmas film. One of my favourite Christmas films right. because it is just funny. Jolly film she also just it says like how oh, is she's always like we're having such a jolly time and i was like god this is just so jolly but i also love that she swears in christmas I was gonna say, like oh my garland yeah she's like oh my garland i'm like that's hilarious i love a pun and then another film i love is the grinch and it's because mm. well a classic, classic. that is a classic, classic. but Jim my Perry, mom always great. would refer to us as the who's um oh, because that's cute. yeah because we're such like christmasy you? people no not like sorry my children. who are you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Who one or who two? <laughs> exactly. From Whoville. Um, I just love how, like, Cindy Lou in Who. She's you? cute. She's so cute. She's um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of the Grinch. Oh, maybe that should be my favourite song. Oh, yeah. What are your favourite films? Favourite films? Last film. I love Actually. So oh, basic. So good. So, it's a great film. Favourite so quote. Basic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eight is a lot of legs. David. <laughs> We just had a whole we had a whole conversation about this off camera. Because I was like, like oh, my favourite is, quote is, is this? And she was like, this wrong. Eight is a lot of legs, Daniel. <laughs> Who the hell is Daniel? Who's Daniel? Eight is a lot of legs, Daniel. Yeah. But then there's also No, I can't say that one, that's rude. <laughs> um, okay, worst Christmas film. Controversial. Mm hmm Elf. I really don't like Elf. Yeah. Don't gasp. I did the gasp with the gasp. <laughs> the gasp. It's just our producer Jess. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> Jess is just gasping in the background. <laughs> I think uh, I think this I know is so I'm gonna get so I feel like I'm gonna get all the hate. You are. Like you're gonna you be are. like the angel. I'm the good cop yeah, in this scenario, are, which is wonderful. Are. Basically, El Will Ferrell does my head in. I and can think of are. so many reasons why you're wrong, but I'm not gonna bore you or oh, anyone else. Yeah, I'll just fall asleep. We'll so it's fine. Um, and you had another one, right? You said that you hated the Polar Express. Oh, back to death. So I also don't like the Polar Express, but that is because one again, the film doesn't like really makes sense to me. I remember yeah. watching it when I was six. It's about a train. <laughs> 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 there they 
it, they they do work. That doesn't make sense. Kids on a train. Yeah. I don't mind. Right, context. I, as we have spoken about, was in the tsunami, lost my sister on Boxing Day. Mm. We watched this film, Polo Express. It came out, I think, around that time, like just before. And I remember we were watching it in Thailand, like a couple of days before yeah. the tsunami. And so now I have negative connotations with that film. So it's the association. More it's the association, it's yeah. It's not so much the film. It's, it's just the association is pretty dark. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on. So Christmas films, obviously they're great. Mm. There's a lot of Christmas hype leading up to Christmas and it doesn't start in December. Though I am quite oh, pleased oh, about that, God. I know it's not for everyone and I have had years where that has not been for me. So for no. those who aren't, yes. kind of sound maybe like an anti-Christmas or just not feeling like you need to celebrate Christmas yeah. until maybe the day. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, you just don't have to be involved if you don't want to. Take yeah. every day as it comes. And if you need a break, stick on your favourite film. Yeah. Put on a, like, just listen to normal music. You don't have to listen to Christmas music. Yeah, I mean... You I had was, a good one. I did. I was pleased with this. Go on. I find that Christmas songs are great, but they get really repetitive. You hear them in every shop, and it's a lot. But, like, people want Christmas songs. So I think you should make a playlist that has some, like, normal songs and some Christmas songs. So a it mix. kind of breaks it up. So that then you're kind of, like, you sing along to every few, but, like... You don't have to sing along to all of them. Yeah. Or like they can be on the background and it or feels you just Christmassy. Skip it and hope you don't get another Christmas song after. Yeah, and I think that's quite a nice balance because I like Christmas songs, but not all the time. And it's yeah. been intense, like very a lot of Christmassy things. A few other ones that we noticed before. Book. Book, reading a book. Read a book. Yeah. And not a Christmas book. Not well, you can read a Christmas yeah. book. That's obviously like legally speaking, that's Christmas fine. Carol. But Charles Dickens. Oh, that's a heavy. Amazing. I was thinking more Biff and Chip. <laughs> anyway, whatever your vibe is. I was just trying to think of a Christmas book. Yeah, Don't but read that book. I think reading a book, having something to do when you're yes. away from a situation without having to feel like you sit on your own and kind of wallow. Yeah. At least you've got something to do. If it's Christmassy or non Christmassy, it's up to you. But just like having that time to just step away. Because I also think, like, I would, if I'm spending time on my own, it's like quite regularly on scrolling through social media, that is going to be absolutely jam packed full With of Christmas. Christmas stuff. Christmas is everywhere. Which is great for those who want to celebrate it or like want to have that time. But I think there are times where you're like, I actually need to just stop from the chaos switch off a second just have a breather and like breathe, even yeah. if you haven't lost someone like i'm sure christmas can be overwhelming as soon as halloween is done christmas everywhere but i actually think like the lint reindeers were out in like july oh, that's an exaggeration <laughs> We all know Christmas can be a really tough time um, for some people because you have to be happy and you have to be jolly. And for some people, I remember at the beginning, I mean, I was quite young, I was about seven when I lost my sister, but I remember at the beginning um, Christmas coming around and it was just, it was tough. And I guess what we want to say is to those people who might have recently lost someone or um, are struggling because the, the first Christmas without their person is coming up. You know, we've all been there and you just don't have to stick to the exact same day that would have been if they were here. So you can make your own new traditions together. Take that time with the people around you and do what you feel like you need to do. And also if you feel like, okay, I need a moment, take that moment. Surround yourself by, with people and try and, you know, make plans and don't necessarily always be alone, but surround yourself with people who understand mm -hmm. and who know what you're going through. And they don't necessarily have to have been through the same thing, but they need to, I guess, understand what you have just been through. And one of the biggest things I would say is throughout my experience of grief, to like leaning on those people that I feel like I can lean on and they will be there for you and they will support you and that is what you need um but also if it becomes too much and everyone's happy and having a good time and you're feeling really down like just take a moment we all need to respond to ourselves and to listen to our grief and to do what we feel we need to do in that moment what would you say is your your advice i think i would agree i think um the more you reject how you're feeling the worse it will feel definitely and forcing yourself to feel a certain kind of way 
Also, the other extreme, like, is forcing yourself to feel sad. Mm -hmm. So if all of your um, family maybe just aren't having a good time and you're actually okay, that's okay too. Yeah. Or vice versa, if someone else in the family, like, is fine and you're like, how can you possibly be fine right now? That's fine too. I think it's just acknowledging that and, like, they'll have crap days another day or crap minutes the next minute. It literally is, like, a minute-by-minute play, I think, when there's days like this, um, but also in life generally. Definitely. And I think, as you said, like, shaking things up like going out i think getting outside was so british as a nation when go on a like, walk yeah go on a walk like have it a cup is of tea. actually it does solve a whole manner of like breaking up the day especially when it feels like everyone's hit a slump when you've eaten maybe you've had a drink like whatever the scenario is just being able to like remove yourself either you and like someone you love or like the whole crew just getting outside does automatically break up the situation, breaks up conversation, you're looking at other people. And I always find it really nice that just going through a park and like just saying hi to like happy Christmas to just completely random people. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds you that there is like a bit of a community here and it's like, it's bigger than you. It doesn't belittle how you're feeling, but it feels like there is life going on around you. And although that's tough because your person's life isn't going on around yeah. you, it reminds you there is like a future to be had. And of like, course. that's really important. bringing it up on Christmas Day and having those traditions that you're sticking to because they, those are things you would have done with them. Like, that could be so lovely. Or it could be too much. You need to listen to yourself. But also reminding yourself that you can enjoy it. Exactly. I think so much of Don't grief is like we have to feel sad all the time. Yeah. And like, especially that first Christmas having lost someone, it's like, we will be sad because they're not here. Yeah. Y you will be. But that's like one feeling of many feelings you can have on Christmas Day or in the Christmas period or you might see someone for one minute and you're like, I love this, now mm. I don't. And as you say, it's about taking yourself off. And I think like, especially this Christmas, I'm really thinking of those people who have lost someone for the first year Definitely. or first couple of years because it's just crap. And you do, without making this sound really sad, you, you, there is a hole there. And yeah. you have lost that person. Yeah. Acknowledge it. You yeah. don't have to pretend it hasn't happened because it has. And I remember Christmases where even now I will wake up and I might feel really sad. Yeah. And I will have a cry because in the past, I particularly Boxing Day, I got up, was sad. Yeah. Pushed through, pushed through, pushed through. And then I had people who were annoying me or, yeah. or like making yeah, comments. Irritable. And it wasn't yeah. like necessary they were being not nice. But I got to breaking point and I remember having like a breakdown mm. like, and I was like, if I had just listened to myself sooner on in the day, yeah. had a cry. You're allowed, it's just because it's Christmas doesn't mean you can't cry. Yeah. Do what you need to do. If you need to be sad, be sad. You know, just because it's Christmas, you don't have to be happy. Yeah. I'm going to misquote this, but there's a saying or a quote or something, which is don't cry because you've lost, smile because you've had. Yeah. Like celebrate their life. Like, yeah. take a moment to do a toast to them, to acknowledge them, even if it's your own private, internal, I love you, I miss you. They're always gonna be a part of you just because they're not physically here. Yeah. You had love, and you have love there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what an acknowledgement of that. Definitely. It's like, they loved you, and you don't have that anymore. And you're so lucky that you have but that you're love. so lucky that they loved like, you. Like, so much. lucky, yeah. and I think that goes back to both you and I with saying the people around us, yeah. we, love so fiercely now yeah. because we have lost and we know that love and how important it is and you know that's never going to go away and maybe in those times when you feel like you've lost that love you can look around and remind yourself of the people of, you still have of the people exactly. that you love fiercely I love that phrase yeah. that's cute so I think for me and Zoe we just say a massive thank you to all those who have listened um, and have a wonderful Christmas happy yeah. Christmas happy Christmas thank, thank you so much that's a wrap, baby! That's a wrap and cut. A Christmas wrap. Yeah. Christmas crack in paper. Christmas crack. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> you had the final slay. Oh, we should have we cut with a wrap. Rethink Holman is a podcast run by the Winston's Wish Youth team. The topics of conversation aim to provide comfort and make a difference to other young grieving people over the age of 13. We hope to give listeners the confidence to talk about their own grief journey. It's rare to be able to listen to other young people being open and honest about their grief and how they're feeling. We hope this podcast reaches young grieving people everywhere and helps them to feel less alone. From teenagers to young adults, students to professionals, we're all different, but we've all got grief in common. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you.
Thank you.